I'm going to begin by opening up a PowerPoint template that's been provided by my institution. Now this template has a couple different colors, but I'm going to stick with the white version for this example presentation. I'm going to add my title, Tan Babies, with the subtitle, Responding to Newborn Jaundice. Then I'm going to add my name and the date. But when I add the date, I'm going to do it in a special way so that it always stays updated. So insert date and time, and then I'm going to click on the date format that I want and update automatically. That way, if I give this presentation a few months from now, the date will be updated to whenever I'm actually giving the presentation. I'm now going to PubMed, where I'm going to pull in the PubMed ID from one of the references that I'm going to use for this presentation. I'm copying into Mick Schroeder's Citation Generator and then pasting it back into PowerPoint where it gives me a formatted version of the main reference that I'm using for this, this talk. Now I'm going to move on to my learning objectives. Now when I'm focusing on my learning objectives, I need to remember to focus on the audience. So I'm going to begin my learning objectives by using the statement, participants will be able to, and then I'm going to go ahead and write in my learning objectives. I know I have a few smelling mistakes as I um, write these, but we'll correct those in just a minute. And then what we're going to do is we're going to highlight key words in these learning objectives. So I'm going to highlight pathophysiology, evaluate, and treatment. Next what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce the fade effect. And then I'm going to go to the slide master. In the slide master, I'm able to make changes that will affect every single slide in the presentation, not just the current slide that I'm on. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a black bar at the top, and then I'm going to put some tabs over that bar. I'm doing some adjustments to the formatting right now um, before I go ahead and place these tabs. These tabs will correspond then to those learning objectives, and they will help to keep the audience oriented as to where we are in the presentation. Now to create multiple tabs, I'm using the control and shift keys. The control key creates a copy of the object that was selected, and the shift key constrains that movement of that object to the horizontal or vertical or sometimes the 45 degree angle uh, diagonal. And then I'm going to change their background so that they are a little more grayed out currently. I now copy those and go exit the slide master. And I'm going to then paste just the black bar portion onto the first slide. And then I'm going to create a new slide, which I will end up hiding at the end of this um, so that the audience doesn't actually see this slide. But it gives me a place just to store these tabs. And I'll be able to use those to copy and paste later on. I'm now going to put those tabs on the learning objectives, um, the learning objectives slide. And I'm going to add a fade effect. Notice that I attached those fade effects to the fading that I already had done for the actual learning objectives themselves. So they will all come in at the same time. And you'll see this when we show an example at the very end of the presentation. I'm now moving on to our case presentation. In this case, a two-day-old infant with a T-billy or a total billy ribbon of 12.0. And I want to involve my audience right away. So I'm going to ask them this question, what else do you want to know? And as I do that, I'm going to be soliciting their answers. And and then showing some of that information as they ask for, um, ask for different clinical uh, pieces of clinical information. Now to do that, I'm going to create a template, or I'm going to create some disappearing covers on this table. I'm going to start off with the template for disappearing covers because that's where the code to create the covers is actually contained. And I'm, and I'm creating a table, and I'm adding some information to that table. Once I'm done creating that table, I'm going to copy it. Sorry, I'm, first I'm going to format it, then I'm going to copy and paste that table back onto the slide, but I have to do it a special way. I have to do paste special and paste it picture enhanced meta file. And then what I can do is I can ungroup it and allow me to ungroup, ungroup the table into individual pieces, so individual PowerPoint shapes. So now I've selected the background and I've, select, and I've pressed Alt F8 to create those covers. I've copied and now pasted this back into my original presentation. Save early and often. We're going to go ahead and save the presentation right now. And throughout this presentation, I will, out of habit, be pressing Control S so that I can continue to keep saving it as I go. Next, we're going to create a slide on pathophysiology. Again, I'm going to use that Control Shift to create a uh, to create copies and to and using the Shift button to constrain them. So Control creates a copy of a shape. Shift constrains that shape to. Um, to horizontal, vertical, or sometimes 45 degree angles. I'm now going to add a couple more um, descriptors here. I'm going to use a 
quick way to create a bulleted list by just putting an asterisk, typing tab, typing some word, and then pressing enter. And PowerPoint then knows that I'm trying to create a list. Now adding the water soluble description there. And then I'm going to add a description of what happens, what's the, what is the side effect of buildup of bilirubin, which can be kernicterous. I'm going to change some of my formatting so that these different circles represent colors that can be associated for um, with each of their individual components. And then I'm going to add some area, arrows in between, but I don't quite have enough room there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my um, my circle over, get rid of that one, and then I'm going to align. And I'm going to do that by going up to this Arrange menu, clicking Align and, and Distribute Horizontally. That's going to allow the appropriate spacing in between the, the two, again using Control shift to create the arrows. And now you can see I'm selecting all of the shapes on this slide. I'm going to do that so that I can then create a slide build with the animation. I, I clicked on them all in the specific order that I want them to appear. And now I'm going to modify some of them. So I'm going to ch change those arrows to uh, white from the left. And I'm going to change the indirect and the direct bilirubin so that they um, occur with, uh, after previous. Um, so that everything will then be arranged in the appropriate order for that slide. Now we're going to actually give the users a little description. You know, a picture is worth a thousand words, so maybe a video is worth 10,000 words. I don't know. Um, here, I've gone to YouTube and I've copied the embed data from YouTube. Now I could just copy the web address and, and paste that in using uh, PowerPoint's built-in version of insert a video, but instead I've done something different. I've pasted the embed code so that I can choose a start and stop time for my video. And you can see that I've specified start equals 59, end equals 67. Those are the seconds at which the video will start and stop. I'm now going to select this. Again, I'm going to use um, the shift button to constrain everything. And um, Sorry, control and shift. Control in that sense will keep the item centered, and shift will keep it, um, will, will keep the item's proportions. Now I'm copying in a screenshot of an article that I, that I had referenced earlier. I've used the Windows tool called Snipping Tool to go ahead and create the copy of that. And now that's back in my presentation. I've cropped it. And now what I'm doing is I'm, giving, I'm creating a black overlay. And you'll see what we'll do with this in a minute. But I'm going to create this as an overlay that's about 50% transparent. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the article. Oh, excuse me, I'm going to fade that. But then I'm going to go back to the article. And I'm going to select some of the text. I've copied that, and now I've pasted that back into my presentation, change the background so I can see it, give it a little bit of shadow for effect. And you can see, though, that I pasted, since I pasted from a PDF document, it didn't know that those were supposed to be continuation lines. And so I've had to go in and, and just delete the, the hard returns that came in because I pasted from a uh, from, uh, PDF document. I like to use the float in effect for um, for those types of overlays. Now we're back to our case presentation. In this case, we're now in the middle of the case presentation and we're going to be moving on to the evaluation piece. So I've already um, used my covers, but I, so I just deleted those. And now I'm going to change this to a two content slide and I'm going to ask what next. So next is, uh, the first item is risk stratification. So I've gone and created that. I'm going to add my animation. Here's my fade. I'm going to get rid of the fade effect from the very first piece so that just the risk stratification text is animated. Now I go and I'm going to copy in a, an image of a graph that we're going to be using. And while Billy Tool is loading, and we'll go back to there in a minute, you can see because we're expecting the users to plot this, there's really no great way to show this other, unless we had a laser pointer or something, but we don't need to do that. What we're doing instead is we're going to create lines that will show where, where this patient needs to be plotted. Remember, this patient was uh, two days old and had a bilirubin of 12. 
So what we've done is we've just added animation that are going to move those lines to the places on the chart um, where, the, uh, where the plotting should occur. And now I've gone to Billy Tool, an online website, and I've copied the table um, from there. I'm going to move it over a little bit, and then I'm going to um, increase the font size of these items, change where my column break is, and continue to increase the font size so it's actually readable on the slide. Now those top two uh, header rows weren't, um, weren't in a readable format, so we've just changed those. But I do want to highlight for our users, for the, my audience, that this is a high-risk patient. So what I'm doing is I've created, I've used the rounded rectangle, and I'm going to use the wheel effect um, to draw attention to the fact that we have a higher risk patient. Now what I'm doing is I'm adjusting the timing of the animations, and I made it also so that those two lines will animate together. For the next couple pieces in our evaluation strategy, we're going to have, a, have very similar slides. So I've gone ahead and copied that case presentation, and now I've created a new slide for the phototherapy threshold. I'm going to delete my table. I'm going to change my layout to a one content, and I'm going to move these lines over, but I first need to change the image that is behind there. I need to crop this image since there's a lot of descriptive text below, and then I'm going to expand the image and, and position it appropriately. But you can see I'm now um, covering over Cincinnati Children. So I've gone to Format Color, Set Transparent Color, and now I have a white, right? now all the white background is transparent instead of being white. I'm moving now my lines to match up with the graph. And then I also need to adjust where they end up after the animation. So I'm just going to click on those and drag them to where they need to be. Again, I'm using the Shift button to constrain the uh, constraint to horizontal or vertical modifications only. Now I'm going to highlight that this is a high-risk infant. So in this case, though, I'm going to use a yellow box, and I'm going to wipe it from left to right and make it look like a highlighter. So I'm going to send it to the back behind the text, and you can now see that the text will look like it's highlighted. And then I want to highlight the line that we're on. So in this case, we're on the very bottom line. So I've created a line, and I'm going to make it red and make it a little bit larger so the user, so the people can see. I don't like where I put that last point, so I'm going to edit points and click and drag it up. And then I'm going to animate it as a white from left to right. Now I'm going to go ahead and copy these two slides again, and we will move on to the exchange threshold. Again, I'm going to delete the animation for the pieces that have already appeared. I'm going to change this to exchange threshold. We'll do the same thing where we're going to change our picture from file. We're going to change it to the last image from the study. I'm going to go ahead and crop that, get rid of our two um, attention-grabbing shapes, move it down, position everything. Again, format color, set transparent color. Going to make it transparent so that I don't lose my Cincinnati Children's logo in my bottom corner. And I'm going to go ahead and expand the arrows. But in this case, as I try to bring that down, it goes all the way and it collapses into the bottom, um, the bottom piece of the, uh, with the bottom line of the graph. So, and that was just because I was zoomed too far out and it just snapped to it. So instead, to fix that, what I did was I zoomed in and I used a quick key of control and then the, the wheel on my mouse to, to quickly zoom in and out. Now I'm drawing attention to the fact that this graph starts at 10 instead of at 0, and that's what that little circle was that I did with, the, again, the wheel animation. I copied and pasted our case presentation again, and this patient only re meets requirements for phototherapy, so I've just get, made a highlight on that, and I'm going to wipe that from left to right. And now I'm going to give the information about the treatment, which is phototherapy. So I will have recommended actions on the left, and I'm going to have some consider or suggested possibility actions on the right. First off, I'm going to talk about phototherapy, which is from photoisomerization. But you can see it was creating two bullets there. And I don't want the, the trans to cis bilirubin to be separate from that photoisomerization. So what I did was I, went, I put them back on one line. And instead of using a hard return, I pressed Shift Enter, which simply created a soft return or a line break. But it thinks that it's all in the same paragraph. So that's why it didn't get its own separate bullet for that one. I'm going to go ahead and, cons and finish off writing some items to consider, and I'm going to change the, the appearance of the 
um, of the consider and the recommended text to be bold and underlined. I'm now adding a, a fade animation, but I went ahead and got rid of the fade animation from the recommended and consider text. Now we're going to do our last couple slides. One of them is a reference slide. And I copied and pasted that reference that we had on the very first slide. And then our very last slide is going to be a question slide, which will also have my contact informa information. Be sure to always include your contact information on any, on any presentation that you give. Um, that shows that you care about the audience and it gives them a way to contact you and help to make some connections afterward. I'll change my font a little bit and change it back to a di little different color so people know that that's my my email address and let's go ahead and see what we've oh excuse me before we see what we've done we are going to we need to copy the tabs that we created earlier onto the different pages now this one I need to go ahead and send that tab to the very back because it needs to be behind the um, the black overlay that we had created go ahead and copy our evaluation tabs and then finally we will copy the treatment tab on the last couple slides and then we will see how it looks. Let's go ahead and run our presentation. You can see how everything came in together. Here are some areas that we're clicking involving our audience. We have a slide build here that again is in that order in which we selected those items to appear. Here's our YouTube video and you can see it's just playing from 59 to 60, 67 seconds. And then we move on to our clinical practice guideline with our overlay showing the risk stratification. This, those were those lines that we uh, had animated so that it would plot on the correct area of the graph. And then we move to our exchange threshold line, same type of thing with our highlighting of that that graph started at 10. Here are our treatment recommendations. And moving on to our references and questions. Thank you.